as we have this increase in obesity with children, we have this decrease in physical education programs and physical education mandates state by state because we have more demands for higher test scores and more academic time. Dawn Ikes is a parent in our community. Her daughter is in the first grade and she brought this proposal to my attention to see if we could introduce Pilates to a class, particularly fifth grade. America! <laughs> It's easier to establish this habit now when they're younger with the hopes that they'll carry over and also have an easier time with the distractions, with puberty, with the insecurities that come from a changing voice, a changing body, a changing school environment. I think Alex is more flexible than he was when he started and that is something that I've been watching a lot. He broke his leg when he was really young and he's never gotten the flexibility back in that leg. So this I have seen, when he runs, he puts that heel down to the ground better than he was doing before. Reducing anxiety in the classroom is a huge concern for a lot of schools and a lot of students. So by helping them understand how to breathe, a technique for breathing that helps reduce anxiety before a test, or before a particular subject matter they're not comfortable with, anything we can give them to feel successful is a benefit to their education. Yesterday in the spelling bee, I felt nervous, but I remembered when we were doing Pilates, it helped me stay calm and relaxed. Last one, inhale and exhale, blow it all out. It's helping me with my studies because I'm more relaxed, because I know that I'm, I'm breathing fine, I'm not going to tighten up. I've gotten a lot thinner and I can run a lot faster than I was before we did Pilates. It's helped me concentrate and relax more, not like, oh my gosh, I have another test and I can't really breathe, and now it's relaxed me. They've all come up to me and told me they've really enjoyed the experience, that they are getting stronger and that they're learning these exercises that it, it actually helps them in other activities that they're involved with. When I do taekwondo, in the beginning stretches, we have to do the bridges and the butterflies and it doesn't hurt as much now. My soccer kick is getting more, much more powerful than it used to be. And I feel like I, I can just break away when I have the ball, my, ball with my feet. When I do gymnastics, my bridges aren't so hard anymore. I've noticed the biggest change in boxing because well, when we usually have to do a lot of jump ropes and when my back hurts, I just do the, stre the stretch that you told me to lift my back up. Uh, and that helps a lot when I punch. Pilates has helped me with stretching in football because I don't, yeah, I can stretch farther and I get a better stretch. My chest, because I pulled a muscle a couple years ago and it stretched a muscle out a tiny bit more. And it's also helped me with my golf swing, especially in my shoulders. And when I started Pilates, it was really, really hard for me. But then as time went on, it got easier for me. And now when I play football with my dad, I can bend over to hike the ball easier. It has minimal impact on the muscles and the joints. And the surface that you're working on is a mat. So you're able to actually control your environment and create a safer exercise environment that's geared towards strengthening not just the larger muscle groups in the body, but some of the deeper muscle groups in the body that are more postural in nature and actually give you better body awareness. Exhale, come up, balance. Hold there. A lot of the time my chest tightens up so I can't breathe that well and I haven't seen noticed any signs of that lately. When my back feels stiff while I'm doing homework and before the jogathon I did it and I did five more laps than I did last year. When I was two, I broke my leg and it was really tight until we started Pilates. And so, and then I've been stretching it out more and more each time, so it feels much better. They are in rehearsal for later life, and to give them this opportunity, I think, is uh, something that will benefit them down the line. But this is really designed to be done in the classroom, in a setting where the teacher can work with them, and they have 15 minutes of you know, flexibility and core strengthening every single day. They have to sit in the chair six hours a day. We may as well teach them how to sit properly and develop and strengthen the muscles to help support them throughout the day. My back was hurting a lot and now it hasn't been hurting as much since we've been doing Pilates. And in the classroom, I don't really bend my back as much when I'm reading, I stay straight. I feel taller because we stretch to the sky. When I'm mad at my brother, I just go in a, um, a quiet space and just do them because it makes me feel 
better about myself and it makes me relaxed and calm. Many children are intimidated because they're segregated out very early on as to whether they're an athlete or whether they're a scholar. And in a lot of ways, I think that it's, it's a misconception that we have based on many of the ways we measure who, how people are physically fit. If we're able to give children options for healthy habits and an alternative form of fitness that really supports all body types all types of brains and develops them in that manner, then they are able to get into their body, coordinate it better, and use their body for what they are best skilled to do. I think a lot of times we don't give these children enough credit for the amount of information they can retain and really integrate into their habits for the rest of their lives.